This video is brought to you by NordVPN. Hi everybody and welcome to Amy Nolte Music. Sometimes you hear a song and the intro grabs you right away. Most of the time, songs have a catchy chorus. But once in a while, you'll hear a song that grabs you right from the beginning, from the very first notes that are sung, from the very first chord that hits. It grabs you and it holds you. And so much of the time, for me anyway, the songs that grab me like that start on the four chord. I'd like to talk about that today, about how great these songs are that I'm going to mention and about how you can write your own songs that start on the four chord to grab the listener just as much as these songs grab me. I could probably think of a better way to put that. Songs are written in keys. I think you know that. Whatever song you're singing, usually there's, there's a key. In this case, F. And you'll move along to whatever chords might come next, but usually you come right back to the one and you feel safe and landed when you get there. Doesn't mean that songs have to start in the key that they're in. Sometimes it can be tricky to even know what key a song is in. Usually the last chord is what will tell you that, not all the time, but usually. You could start a song that's in F on the two chord if you wanted to. I just made that one up. You could start a song on the six chord if you wanted to, that's in F, so D minor in this case. That would be a nice one. You could even start on the five chord if you wanted to. I think the intro to The Greatest Love of All does that. But like I said, we're talking about the four chord right now, which is my favorite. I think it's my favorite place to start. Not fooling at all. I'd like to show you about how it sounds and why it's compelling. Actually, let's let Ray Charles show you. I can't stop loving you. This song starts with a pickup, as do a lot of the songs that I'm gonna talk about today. I can't stop loving you. It's useless to say. So first we start with that four chord, but preceding the four chord is a pickup. A couple of notes that set us up for the first chord. And when you hear that first chord, you don't know that it's the four chord until you hear it land or resolve. I can't stop loving you. She said to me, right? Like what if that was the first time you heard the song? That's the one chord. I screwed you up with that, didn't I? Sorry about that. It's not what I'm trying to do, but I wanted you to know that, that just because you hear something a certain way, you don't always know how it's gonna end up until you give it just a little bit of time and, and let it land, like I said. So when we've got, I can't stop loving you. It rests there for a second. I've made up my mind. And now we land, right? And now we're gonna tonicize this tonic even more by going to the five. To live in misery. That's the five chord of the days gone by. Then we, we hit the, the five of four or the one with a dominant seven. I can't stop wanting you. And like, as soon as you hear that four chord land, doesn't it just, it just makes you want more. That's my main point today. Starting a song with the four chord makes you want more. And it makes you want it now. There's a great jazz standard called Just Friends written by John Klemner that does this in a different way. It goes like this. Just friends, lovers no more. Just friends, but not like before. 
-hmm. We've been through a few keys by the time I get this far, and it could be very hard to know what key the song's actually in. But we heard it already. Just friends. That's the four chord. So it's an F major in this case. Lovers no more. Now we turn that four into the minor. Which means that it's the two of E flat. But we never go to E flat. So after we do F minor to B flat seven, we come right to C major. Just friends. Which is the key of our song. Now this song loops around, it takes you through some cool places, but in the end, it goes, We loved, we laughed, we cried, and suddenly love died. The story ends, and we're just friends. Now you totally know that you're in C major. Your ears hear it. If you're the one playing, you, you feel it in your fingers. But check it out, what you do to start the song again, right? And we're just friends, just friends. And it's compelling again, in a way that most songs aren't. Because you've already wrapped it up, right? You've, you've landed on this, on this tonic key. But then to start again, to come back to that four chord, you're using the E note, just friends. The E note was really strong in C, and the E note is really strong on an F major chord, which is the four. So something to think about. If you want to choose a starting melody note for your composition, make it a note that also sounds good in the tonic. Just make sure that it works with the four as well. All right, warning. The next song on my list is my very favorite of all of these songs. Let's let Paul do it for you first. And when I go away. We've got this strong A. It just hangs around. Then we get the first chord. When I go away, I know my heart can stay with my love. I know my heart can stay with my love. It's so brilliant. Now, okay, let's go back to that A, right? We've got the A hanging. I'll tell you, this song is in the key of F, but the first chord is a strong B flat major chord. Think about that A, right? It's the seven, the major seven of the B flat chord, and it's the three of the tonic of F, right? It's the exact same thing that we just talked about in Just Friends. That ending note was the three, but when we start, it's the major seven. How about that? Great minds think alike, huh? We hit it. And when I go away, hit it again. Hit it again. I know my heart can stay. We don't go to the one chord here. With my love. We go to the minor three, which is one of my very favorite diatonic triads in the whole universe. My love, because I think it's really melancholy. And then he uses that to go to the six, the dominant six, or the five of two. D7, it's understood. It's in the hands of my love. We're back to that four chord. Back to the minor three, my love. Back to the four, does it then good. We've got a half diminished chord, go Paul McCartney. It's the sharp four, half diminished, B minor seven, flat five. We've, we've never landed on F yet. Love, 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 love. What's he say? Whoa, 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 whoa. That's when we land. So he's, got, he's also got the courage to land us on F with a nonsense lyric, which we can all sing along to if we remember if it's la or whoa. La, 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 la. I think it's whoa. And then he really tonicizes it here. My love does it good with a plagal cadence, four to one, strong. But then, again, oh my gosh, again. And when the cupboard's bare, how much does that just like hold you in the palm of its hand? So much, so much. So there's something about just letting it hang, like letting it ring that is so beautiful as well. All right, I digress, next song. Now, I know that all of you listening to this video might not be hip to Pat Metheny. Get hip. 
Bright Size Life is an extraordinary composition that hooks you right from the beginning, just like all of these songs. Did you hear how it lands on the four chord with a pickup? It's another, it's another song with a pickup. So the song's in D, the first chord is G, and the note that we land on when we get to G is actually the six of G, or the nine of D. So it's not as strong as that third seven relationship that we were talking before, but it's strong in a different way, in that it's, it's a feeling, it's a vibe, it's washy. To land on the six, we've got a killer chord next. It steps away from D major for sure, but we come right back to it. What was that chord? It was a B flat major seven with a very strong sharp 11 in it, which is also the same note that we had, the E, right? E. La, here it is, again, right? La, then he lets it resolve. It is so beautiful. So that's another tip. You could take a note that isn't quite as strong, but that is a really beautiful chord tone, like the six or the nine in either, right? The four or the tonic, subdominant or tonic. And it can make you have a different kind of compelling beginning of a song that's a little bit more ambiguous and so beautiful. If you watch my channel, you'll know that I love the song Wichita Lineman made famous by Glenn Campbell. Lots of people have covered it, but I love it. And, and I'm going to make the case that it starts on the four chord. I know that there's an argument to be had there, but, but listen, listen to how it sounds. I am a lineman for the county. Already it's not settled, is it? And I drive the main roads. That's low for me. Doesn't it sound like it wants to go here? It really does, doesn't it? It sounds like it wants to go to F. We started in B flat major, which is the exact same thing that Paul McCartney did with My Love. And actually the chords are the same. At least the first two. We've got subdominant to median, four to minor three. I am a lineman for the county. How about those notes? Major seven again up to the nine, so it's an A going to a C in B flat. Let me come down. And I drive the main road. Searching. So instead of going to F, he goes to D minor, which is the relative minor of F. For the sun, for another overload. The place that we end up is actually D, which is really, really interesting. But it doesn't stay there. We never actually cadence in F, so that's why I say there's an argument. But, but I feel like like it should or like we want it to. So I'm making the case that it does start on the four chord. But it's so nice. It's got a pickup again, right? So by now, if you haven't realized it, if you're trying to write a song that starts on the four chord, or if you have an idea for a song that starts on the four chord, it's not a bad idea to give it a pickup. For some reason, that grabs you because when the four comes in, it's like, oh, wow, I wasn't sure what I was set up for, but ah, it hit me. The next song I'd like to talk about is a little quicker. And uh, I mean, it's done several ways. It doesn't always have to be quick, but my favorite recording of Midnight Special is by Little Richard. Listen to how he starts. Well, you wake up in the morning with a pickup. You hear that word, baby? Well, you wake up in the morning, you hear the work bell ring. It's the four chord. He's in the key of G. He starts on C, and it's a C7 this time. Right? Hear that seventh in there? It makes it bluesy right away. Also, the one chord has a seven on it. Now we've got D7. It's 
So I like that the, the little pickup to this song starts like that, but also the chorus starts like that, which, which is so bold. <laughs> I can't talk much about it because it chokes me up inside. I love it. Try it. You can try, you can try with a dominant chord, that, that dominant four chord. Something really cool about that too, isn't there? There are so many great jazz songs that start on the four. After You've Gone, Love for Sale, Almost Like Being in Love. Check them out if you'd like to. But the last one that I'm going to touch on today is a wonderful old, old standard called Sleepy Time Down South by Clarence Muse and Otis and Leon Rene. <music> Louis Armstrong's recording of it slays me. Let's look at what it does. such a good melody but let's check out that starting note on that chord we've heard it twice already yeah it's the major seven of the four chord so the song's in e flat the first chord is a flat major seven yeah that's right so that means the first note is a g the major seven on the a flat chord oh now we go to the killer chord of d flat nine with a sharp 11, which brings us to the settling place, E flat. Something like that. I didn't maybe quite get it right, but So the settling note is the tonic, the, the last note of the melody. When it's sleepy time down south, then we go to that four chord. Maybe we go to it by way of half step above. Even if your last melody note is not the same as your starting note, it's still a great note to start on, the major seven. It's okay that it's not the same one as the ending note. It's totally fine. It's been so fun for me to go through these songs with you. I love all of them. And there are many more also that I didn't include in today's video. If you know of a song that starts on the four chord that is extra awesome, put it in the comments for me. We'd all love to see them. Don't forget about that four chord. It's a strong, strong choice. Like I said, grabs the heck out of you right from the get-go. Use it in your composing. If you're having trouble, if you've got a chorus written already and you don't know how to write a verse, consider the four chord. I'm, I'm making a strong case for the four chord, aren't I? I also want to make a strong case for today's sponsor, which is a kind of unlikely sponsor for this channel, but I'm really glad that they asked me because I actually really love this product, this service, NordVPN. A couple of years ago, I picked up NordVPN for myself and I've still got it and I don't see myself ever canceling it. It does a lot of wonderful things. The reason that I picked it up was because you might not know about me, but I really love to watch a lot of British TV, a lot of British movies. And sometimes I'll be right in the middle of a series, Netflix maybe, and they'll cancel it for America. You might think it's totally canceled, but it's not. If you have your VPN set for a different country, maybe Australia, maybe England, maybe Germany, you don't know. But sometimes you can find it in another country and continue watching the series that you love. What it does is it lets you choose a different country to make your IP address come from. You may not know it, but your internet service provider tracks your activity, not if you have NordVPN. Sometimes you get emails that are phishing for your information, right? Or sometimes people even get hacked, not if they have NordVPN. 
I'm super safe from this. I've got it turned on and it protects me and lets me know when I'm being fished or hacked. The reason that John was glad, that's my husband, that we got the NordVPN is because he really likes to watch tennis matches and they're never available um, with anything that we subscribe to. So he puts his IP address in Australia and he gets all the matches that he wants, I think. So whether you just want to hang on to your shows that you love or you'd like to protect yourself, I mean, why not do both? Sign up with my code for NordVPN. It's nordvpn.com slash Amy Nolte, and then choose your plan. Using my code will get you a significant discount. It'll be anywhere from 3 to $5 a month, depending on the plan that you choose. It's a great service, and I highly recommend it. I'll see you next time on Amy Nolte Music.